Hi everybody, TJ Mack Vintage Cards here and today I'm doing episode 4 of Through the Cardboard and I'm profiling this guy right here, the Gentle Giant, Ernie Lombardi and this is him showing on his 1935 Diamond Stars card it is an error card as you can see, his name spelled incorrectly it's E-A-R-N-I-E -E on the card but it's really E-R-N-I-E -E which is the typical spelling of Ernie. So it's a, kind of an interesting error to me. Um, but this guy was one of the, the, the best catchers in Major League history, uh, certainly in Cincinnati Reds history. Unfortunately, he probably played in the same ball club as the best catcher in Reds history, and maybe even Major League history, in Johnny Bench. But before Bench became known as the great catcher that he was, Ernie Lombardi was the standard set for the Cincinnati Reds. So let me ask you this. Was Ernie Lombardi the greatest hitter of all time? I read a really interesting article by writer Brandon Schrader, and he said he just may have been. The 17-year catcher was known to be the slowest player in the majors during his career, which lasted from 1931 to 1947. In fact, he was so slow that the infield would regularly move back into the outfield, knowing that the six foot three, 250 pound Lombardi was never going to leg out a single. In fact, Lombardi joked that for three years he thought Pee Wee Reese was an outfielder before he realized that Pee Wee Reese was the shortstop for the Dodgers. Now, what was interesting too is Lombardi also used an interlocking hand grip similar to how a person would hold a golf club. Now Lombardi used this unusual grip because it gave him good bat control, but it was obviously the wrong way to really hold a bat. And he said one time that sometimes when he was in a slump, he would use a regular grip during batting practice, but it always felt sort of funny to him, and he would go back to his golf grip. No one ever told him to take a regular grip on a bat. You know, they didn't have like the schooling and things like they have today that teach you how to play baseball. They just kind of did things back then. Now, the schnoz was that he was called for obvious reasons. As you can see, he has quite the large size nose there. In spite of having no speed and an unorthodox batting grip, he was a 306 career hitter. He is third all-time in catcher batting average behind his contemporaries, which were Mickey Cochran, you can see right here on a Diamond Stars card. And the other one is the great Bill Dickey. And this, this card here is one of my favorites. I love this pose of Bill Dickey. Uh, it was just one that I had to have. It took me a while to find one that I liked, but uh, it's just a really nice example. They're getting ready to make a play. Nice pose there. So he was third behind those two great catchers in batting average. So the way you got to do that, though, is you got to look at the games that the uh, catcher actually caught in the game that they played in. That's how they would factor in the batting average back then to see what the career average was. So another thing that I read interesting about Ernie Lombardi is by uh, New York Times writer Arthur, Arthur Daly, who watched Lombardi play, and he said this of him. When you look back on him in his 17-year career in the majors, you almost come to the conclusion that he was the greatest hitter of all time. Every hit he made was an honest one. Where a Ty Cobb, he would scratch out hundreds of infield singles. The lumbering Lombardi did all his running in the same spot. Now Lombardi went on to finish his uh, career as a, a world champion in 1940. He was an MVP in 1938. He won two batting titles in 1938 and 1942. He caught Johnny Vandermeer's back-to-back no-hitters. Now, defensively, he wasn't the greatest of catchers, certainly. Um, he led the league in pass balls nine times. However, like Bench, he said that he was said to have caught a pitch barehanded from Johnny Vandermeer. He also had a rocket arm and had a respectable 47% of runners thrown out. Now, Lombardi died in 1977. He was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1986 by the Veterans Committee. And frankly, he should have been inducted uh, many years earlier. He was probably the third or fourth best catcher of his era, which he played with some great ones like Bill Dickey that I showed you, Mickey Cochran, and also Gabby Harnett. 
So um, he was definitely one of the, the better players um, of his time. Now I'll let you decide if the Schnaz was the greatest hitter of all time, but I think that we all can agree that he made the most of his ability. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Through the Cards. And I will be back again with another video very soon. Have a great day.